Hey my friends, how we doing today? I put out that stainless steel countertop video for a toolbox a while back and showed y'all my paper computerized illustration on how you could turn a restaurant table into a work counter with a stainless steel top. And a friend of mine saw the video and said he would like to have one. So since I showed y'all how to do it on paper and just drew it, I thought I'd go ahead and video it while I'm building it. He wants to build the actual drawer box. He wants to have drawers in them. So, going to let him do that part, and I'm going to do the table. We're going to beef it up a little bit more, make it a little more durable than it is the way it comes, and turn it into a great stainless steel countertop bench thing for the shop. So, let me show you all how I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get at it. Alrighty? Hey, my friends, how we doing? Here sits that stainless steel table. What I've done is I've attached the shelf with the bottom of the shelf four inches off of the finished floor there. And this stainless steel table is called a restaurant prep table. Mine is a 48 by 30. Got it off of Amazon for right at $200. Uh, 209 to be exact, I think. I say I think, I think. And here it is on Amazon, guys. Same table. Got to me in about two days, I think it was. I'll uh, do my darndest to put a direct link for it in the video. Y'all know I'm no good with that stuff, but I'll sure give it a try. I've been getting some help with that kind of stuff. Hey guys, I wanted y'all to know this. This is the table flipped upside down. The table comes with Allen set screws to set the legs in the corners. But in one of the holes, I put a self-tapping screw. If you're going to build a cabinet in and enclose it, moving it around over years, Allen screws will come loose. And you would never want that to happen. So that is a 3 8 inch by half inch self-tapping, um, what do you call that? Oh God, Oxagon head bolt. And that shelf will never move. Alright guys, this is what the bottom of the table looks like. A bunch of reflections from stainless steel cords. But I'm just kidding. It's shiny, what can I say? As you can see, it has structure underneath where the legs sit. But in the centers, just the one layer of the stainless steel. And if you're going to use it for a work counter, you want a little more oomph than that. So let me show you something. Alright guys, from the factory, I kid you not, the nuts they put on these little support rails, I can just take them off with my hand with a slight little break. If I had a guess, like a lot of products, it's gone down some, yep, gone down some assembly line. And they're just on there loose as a goose. So, mine are 16 millimeter. I don't happen to have any 16 millimeter lock nuts. These things come with these, what do they call them, barrel nuts, cover nuts, uh, pretty nuts, you know. So what I'm going to do on them, since I don't have any 6 millimeter lock nuts, I would prefer to put lock nuts. I'm going to put lock washers. And I'm going to put permatite. Because these are going to be enclosed and I won't be able to get to them to secure them. Anytime you're enclosing some bolts that you can't get to after the fact, the last thing you want them to do is come loose later. So I'm using some uh, permatite. Thread lock. Been around for ages. Use it on a lot of things. Comes in little bottles. You can get it at most any hardware. What it does, it basically, it's a glue, for lack of a better words. Keep the uh, threads from coming loose. And it's bloody red. They make a removable and a non-removable. I have no intentions of taking these off. They're non-removable. And I don't want them to come off. So, for that reason, not only are we tightening them, because the fact we didn't do a very good job of it, we're making sure they don't come loose. There we go. You know, I just realized something. That was pretty funny. And I'll tell you why. That's a lot of storage, huh? 
reason I show you that? <laughs> I don't have a six, excuse me, a six millimeter lock nut. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm pretty sure most of y'all are familiar with liquid nail. If you're not, it comes in tubes. It's sold at your your hardwares and your Home Depots and Walmart and just about everywhere. I remember back in the early 80s when it first came out, they basically designed it for putting up paneling. You know that old wood grain panel, wood veneer paneling stuff? And my friends, I have used liquid nail for everything. For metal, for plastic, for glass. In the right situation, they make a clear version of it. They named this stuff wrong. They should have called it forever glue. When I'm gluing here, it's there forever. You'll have to tear the product apart to get it off. What I'm doing is like I was saying, that's just a thin little piece of metal of uh, stainless steel there. Makes a pretty nice top, very durable, but it's meant for kitchens. So I cut up a couple of scraps of some uh, MDF, laminated MDF, that I have laying around. I missed. I shouldn't have missed. Because anyway, I cut them real snug and they're tucking under a lip here. There we go. Love, love, sorry. There we go. That's gonna make that work surface very solid. I'm even gonna go as far and to cut a couple of little strips to fill in these inch and a half pieces right here. Just gives me a nice solid surface. It's hard to see when everything's so shiny, but this right here, this inch and a half, is just another flat surface right up on the edge. So, not necessary, but I kind of overbuild everything. So I'm gonna put some uh, more of this uh, MDF in there to stiffen it up a bit. All right, my friends, I put in those little white strip extra fillers I was telling y'all about on the other side of the braces, and I went ahead and liquid nailed in some cross runners. These um, factory made little support beams here are exactly three quarters of an inch tall. So with the three quarter inch inside, and then the three quarter inch, I'm about an eighth inch below the top. Gonna make for one rock solid top. There you go, you can see what I mean a little better. The uh, the little gap I had right over here. Let me see if I can get you all over there. See, Fill them in right next to the beams. Right, so even the edge is strong. There we go guys, all the braces glued and screwed in. Let it sit there overnight, and then we'll get working on the drawer box. And here we go, guys. The drawer box is all made, finished up, and done. 100 pound tracks. Now, I didn't build this drawer box myself. Um, actually, turns out I'm going to make this table for a friend, and he wanted to build the drawer box. So, he built the drawer box and brought it over. And this is what's going to go inside the center of the table. Alright guys, got the box sitting inside the table. Y'all can see how the legs hang out past the box. Now we're going to put some strips on it. He built it deep enough so it went past the back leg where I don't need to put strips on the back. So Let me get some strips made here. There we go guys. Three strips. Firing it out flush with the outside of the pole. Also, by cutting them nice and tight, it holds the cabinet in place. 
All right, my friends, I put the two sides on, three-quarter inch oak, and what I did was I glued them to my runners that you saw me put on, and I nailed them on with 23 gauge pin nails. 23 gauge pin nail is great. You don't even see the holes. So now I'm gonna veneer the back. Hey y'all, this is a little molding that I have left over from my block paneling job in an office a few years back. Gonna use it up. All right, my friends, I got the back veneer piece put on, the three quarter inch red oak back there. And I'm doing y'all a favor this time. Instead of watching me on the saw all the time, I'm just showing you as I build it. Try and help you a little bit. Everybody knows how to cut a square piece of wood. And on the very front to cover up the legs, I veneered it again. This time I used solid red oak. And since I could only nail it or tack nail it on the right hand side, or the inner edge of the box, I put some two-part epoxy in there and nailed it. Make sure it's nice and solid. And Mr. Berto, I gotta give credit where credit's due, went ahead and put some sanding sealer on the drawer boxes. No gloss or anything, just some sanding sealer and then sanded it up. Hey my friends, this is what I cut that old molding down to. There y'all can see the profile there. My friends, this is what you call a chamfered corner for when you're building cabinets. It's strictly a piece of plywood cut on two 45 degree angles. If you do butt joints on three quarters plywood, <clears throat> excuse me. Your width is roughly about one inch. And what you do with this, when you have two pieces of plywood button, you put it right in the corner, glue it and tack it in, and then sand it. To make that type of corner. And I'm gonna see if I can get y'all a better angle at that, okay? Hold on. Which is doing? You plywood just like, looks like it flows around the corner. And that's what you call making a champed corner. When you have two joints like that, side by side. And there you go, that's all you have to do to finish that. But, with that shown and that said, that's not what I wanna do. Alrighty, my friends, here's what I made. This is one inch by one inch made out of Paduke. I've rounded the outside corner here, and I've rounded the top and bottom on each end. Get that to show up. So hard to get things to show up in the camera. That's what I'm going to use in my corners, and I'll show y'all. Paduke, one inch by one inch. There you go, my friends. You can't do that kind of band strapping by yourself, that is, and film it. Those are crank down straps like you'd use on a truck. Didn't want any kind of nail holes or any bolts or anything like that on those corner pieces. Paduke corners. And from the front side. That's you know, If you use those type of straps, Always try and keep it away from your finished surface when you're cranking on them. Otherwise it can scratch your, your woodwork or your product or your stainless steel or whatever the case may be. If you don't have a section like I do where I can take the drawers out, then put some cardboard behind it or something. So you keep the metal strap from scratching your product. Wouldn't make a musical instrument, would it?
we go, my friends. Drawer fronts all on and drawer, drawer hole pulls drilled. Now we got to put the sand and sealer and the gloss on. And Mr. Berto is going to get started on the sand and sealer. Like I was saying, guys, this one has three drawers. You could do anything. Ten drawers, half drawers, one door, two doors. You name it. Just fill in the hole beneath with whatever your needs are. And if y'all can see the little black pieces on the bottom, those are the height adjusters. Every time I've ever bought one of these restaurant tables, it's came with steel adjusters. This is like the first one I've ever gotten with plastic adjusters. But like everything else in this world, it's getting cheaper and cheaper. But I ordered some metal height adjusters for it. We don't want wheels on this. They just haven't got here yet. That's what those little black things you see on the bottom of the leg are. Plastic height adjusters. <laughs> guys all finished the only thing I haven't been able to do yet is put the metal legs on the bottom to replace the plastic pieces they haven't shown up yet but it's all done got this little Texas stars and it's stainless steel pull handles put my little shop logo in it there's those stainless steel pulls three drawers My customer didn't want pegboard on the side, so I didn't. I just left it all plain oak. Mr. Berto put the sanding sealer on it and two coats of urethane gloss. So that's how you can build a workbench using a restaurant table. Get yourself a stainless steel top for very little money. Hope y'all like it. Now it's got to get loaded on the truck. Hey guys, I just about got mine all set up. We got the, the metal lathe and the mill machine all bolted down in place and getting them assembled. Drilled everything down to the counter in place. Put some pass-through holes in the center. If uh, any of you guys are in the life safety business and do sprinkler work, I'm a general contractor and I repurpose everything. What these are, are sprinkler trim rings. Look like custom made grommets, don't they? <laughs> so, working on getting this set up, it looks all nice and pretty at the moment. Boy, it's going to get beat up. Wired all the cords through the underneath. Brought them out, plugged them in the back where I could get to them. Got them on the six-way power strip. There's a male end hanging out here. And like I showed you on the bill video, there's a power end hanging right above. Pull it down and plug it in, and they're all good to go. Cords out of the way for the most part and out of sight. You can do that type of scenario on any work table. And you keep those cords from hanging all over and having to plug in and get in the way. This way everything's set up at your fingertips and ready to go. Hey, I can't find where you put that. Come on. Alright, turn that off. I gotta get started here. Turn it off. People, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> there you go my friends I hope my friend likes that table I say customer but it's for a friend that's how you can make yourself a stainless steel shop uh, top 
stamp t blah, 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 blah. Oh, God. That's how you can make yourself a shop cabinet with a stainless steel top without spending a lot of money uh, repurposing a restaurant table. And again, like I was saying, you can put anything below there. Open shelves, uh, doors, drawers, a mixture of drawers and doors, a double. You can buy those tables up to, I think, 8 or 10 feet long. And uh, most of the, the countertops in my shop aren't stainless steel, with the exception of the general purpose area of the shop. Where I do the woodworking, I like to have wood countertops. But in some cases, doing metal work, uh, engine cleaning, parts work, you like to have a cleanable countertop. So it works out real good, and I beefed it up so it's as durable as the rock of Gibraltar. So I hope he likes it, and I hope you found a couple of helpful ideas there. If you like those little stainless steel poles that I put on it made out of the lag bolts with the 5 16 washers, they bottom out on the lag bolt and make the back plate of a pole when you put them in that way. And I have a video on the channel on, uh, in detail on how to make those. Uh, right now I'm getting started working on some Christmas bowls that I've got to get done. There's six of them I've got to have made so I can get them out for Christmas. So I got to get to work on that, guys. And I'm also doing a update on the shop tour video for you. It's been about a year and a half since I put out my shop tour video. And there's been quite a few changes. So I'm making a new shop video. Got to get it done. Alrighty. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy holidays to you. Hit that like button for me. If you haven't subscribed, I'd be honored if you do. To all my existing subscribers, a million thank yous, guys. It is an honor, truly an honor. Thank you, my friends. Gonna get back to work now. I'll be a walk.